Even though we kicked off the MCU, if you don't know where you could start reading Iron Man in the comics, then this is the video for you. We're both. Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. As is tradition with me where to start series, I'm going to begin with the first run that I ever read for this character, which for me was The Invincible Iron Man by Matt Fraction. But if you're looking for a modern, longer run that you can really sink your teeth into, then this is probably going to be the best option that you've got that was released within the last 20 years. Don't get me wrong, the art by Salvador La Roca can look a little bit uncanny when it comes to the human faces, but the armors and the mechs are plentiful and they're also beautiful. Also, if you're somewhat familiar with the Bendy era of Marvel, and the fallout of Secret Invasion, Fear Itself and Siege, then this run doesn't shy away from that and really gets itself involved with it. But as I learned when I went back and reviewed this, that isn't always the highlight of this run. But when it does get it right, it's exciting, it's entertaining and it really just grips you and it shows the more human side of Tony. In particular, the most wanted story arc is one of the best tie-ins and also one of the most intense that has come out in Marvel in the last 20 years. And even though other creators have worked on Tony Stark since, when this finishes, you will feel like you've been given a complete beginning, middle and end. And he did a good enough job of getting me invested in this character when I was younger, so why wouldn't I recommend this? And I know there's going to be the comic book Karens that are going to get annoyed because I haven't just recommended Tales of Suspense issue 39, but you have to block those gatekeepers out because Fractions Run is a great modern jumping on point. Unfortunately, this is quite accessible now because it's getting printed again as a modern epic, and if you wanted to pick that up for a little bit less and support the channel at the same time, you can get them with the discount codes that we've got from the channel sponsor. Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services. And if you use code WOOF WOOF, you'll get $2 off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code WOOF WOOF, ship it together for 5% off your entire order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like. Right, let's get a little bit more classic and old school because I'm going with Demon in a Bottle. This is pretty much the main highlight of the Michelini, Leighton, and John Romita Jr. run. And it was also the storyline that reinvented Tony Stark. It made him more human, but it is a bit more of a slow burn, which might be what you're looking for. It isn't all hands on deck action, and it doesn't have the exact same pacing that you'd expect from a modern book, but that might be what you like. There's so many different jumping on points for a character that there's no right or wrong answer. Fair warning, I do feel this will work a bit better for an older reader because it does deal with alcoholism, and it is also just a different way of telling a story. The first time I read this, I'll admit I was too young and I didn't really get a lot of enjoyment out of it, but now that I've read a lot more comics and understand what this era was like and I've also had quite a bit of booze myself. It reads a lot better and I feel like that might be a similar situation for other people. It is just one of the best storylines out of Marvel during the 80s and it isn't fun watching Tony Stark spiral but it is engaging. The ramifications of this storyline are still being referenced in modern Iron Man runs so it would be a great jumping on point to see where that all began. Next up is another classic one but I'm going with Kerbu Seek. This kicked off in the late 90s following Heroes Return and it was the run that was launched as a way to bring people into the world of Iron Man and it's still very much enjoyable today and it doesn't feel like it was released nearly 30 years ago. It's got phenomenal art from Sean Chen and gives a fresh start for the character which makes it a perfect jumping on point. There's a ton of action and it's a perfect middle ground between a series that you can read in its entirety and benefit from that or you can jump in and out for a few different story arcs and not be too lost. It's got the Mandarin, Modok, Whiplash, Fin Fang Foom and covers a lot of the bases that make Iron Man, well, Iron Man. My next suggestion is the Bendis run. Yeah, let's just get another controversial one out of the way. But this run is not as bad as people make it out to be. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound like the greatest recommendation. But I'm putting this on here because maybe you want a more modern run and you want to be a bit surprised and not fully know what direction it's going to go in next. Because this was massively impacted by events that were going on at the time, some of which Bendis wrote, but still. And with a lot of these picks, you might have noticed that I say the textbook stark Iron Man stories, but... Bendis does not do that. And you know what? That's not necessarily a bad thing. The infamous Iron Man should not work, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't entertaining. And I can confidently say that Doom in the role was the best stand-in for Iron Man that Bendis gave us. So if you know you like Bendis' writing and you don't mind something that wasn't during his prime, then this might be worth checking out. Again, these are just recommendations. Next up, we're going to go with Armor Wars. Now this is from the second part of the Michelinian Leighton run, which I'm going to explain a bit further later, but I wanted to highlight this because when I was growing up, 
up, this was pretty much everything that I wanted from an Iron Man story. It was one of those books that got me excited just from the title alone, and this really delivers. Because Stark is on the warpath against anyone wearing an armour after some of his designs are stolen. It's got stealth spy elements, action, tie-ins with Cap's arc as the captain, and has a wide array of villains to go up against. So if you are looking for a more concentrated story that's going to introduce you into his rogues gallery, then this will be perfect for you. Obviously, yeah, it hasn't got absolutely everybody in it, but it's still a great starting point. And also with it being the title of an upcoming MCU show, although I'm not sure if that's been cancelled or whatever's happening with it, just shows how important this is within the Marvel lore. And also the fact that this is the second suggestion that was done by Michelini and Leighton. And it's also not going to be the last. Okay, I'm kind of going to be cheating on this next one because maybe you did enjoy Demon in the Bottle, and maybe you also enjoyed Armor Wars, but you don't like jumping into a run partway through. In that case, I think you should be jumping into the Michelini and Leighton run. The whole thing, not just the odd story arc here and there. When these two first started working on Tony, the character had already existed for over a decade, but they were the two that really brought him forward. The character had already existed for over a decade, but they were still figuring out who he was, and there was also the formation of his rogues gallery going on. You get introduced to Justin Hammer, Whiplash, Titanium Man, there's even the entirety of Doom Quest in here. As well as you might have noted from Armor Wars, this duo came back later on in the 80s and did a second run on the character. So if you prefer the Bronze Age, you can start at the beginning, but if you like the Modern Age, you can start after that. And I think it's great that there's so many different ways that you can jump into this run because besides Demon in the Bottle, I preferred a lot of the later stuff. It was a bit more modernised and action orientated, so that might be the same for you. When it comes to Michelini and Leighton, they did so much work on Iron Man that there's probably going to be an arc for whatever type of storyline you want. Okay, we're going into another controversial one now because I'm going to be recommending Dan Slott. I'll admit, this one isn't the best, but it's recent, accessible, and not too long if you wanted an introduction into modern Iron Man. And sometimes you have to stop expecting perfection and enjoy what's in front of you. This run is the most recent one that I'll recommend because I haven't read anything after this and there are some fun storylines in here and it won't take up too much of your time. I feel like I've tried to make the shortness of this a selling point on two different occasions now. Once again, it deals with technology that Stark made working against him, so although it's far from groundbreaking, it hits a lot of the beats that most Iron Man stories do, which is why I think it's not the worst starting point and could be a gateway to some of the more prolific runs. And it brings back the 2020 armor when it was being released during that year, which looks dumb, but I love it. This is also very easy to jump into now thanks to the Omnibus, and if you did want to pick this up and you're in the EU and you want free shipping and free gifts with every order, then the only place that you need to go is Comics Bugle. They've been a massive support to the channel over the last year, and they can be to you as well, because if you use code WOOFWOOF, you'll get 3% off all items that aren't already in a sale, so make sure you're getting your orders in. After that, I'm going to be recommending Dennis O'Neill. This is possibly the most important run for Iron Man that often gets forgotten about, and I really feel like this was ahead of its time. It might also just be the victim of circumstance because it's unfortunately sandwiched in between the two runs that were done by Michelini and Leighton, but O'Neill still gave us the best of both worlds because there's some great one and done adventures, like there's a decent team up that features Moon Knight, but all the while O'Neill was dealing with the lasting ramifications of Demon in a Bottle, and in a way that the original story neglected by only exploring the extremes of alcoholism in the last issue. It's ironic as well because from quotes I've seen, O'Neill was not a fan of Tony Stark, but found a way to humor humanising more than ever before, and dive into the problems that having such an addiction can be for her heroic figure. There's also great development for Rhodey, and there's plenty of appearances from Iron Man's rogues gallery. O'Neill was on the book for about four years, so there's more than enough material here to keep you going, if you did want a longer run that really set the tone for what would come in future, and I really hope this run gets an omnibus. However, if you did want an origin story for Tony Stark, but something that was more modernised from the 60s, Season 1 is a great option that was written by Howard Jakin. The art by Jared Parallel is this unique painted style that makes the book feel a bit more realistic and in a similar league to somebody like Ardy Granoff, and hits many of the same beats as the first movie, but tries to connect it to the comic universe. It also condenses a lot of Stark's history so that it feels more like a previously on, because it touches on his alcoholism whilst at the same time we get to see him developing his first few Iron Man suits. Sure, it doesn't have the most memorable of villains, but that was never the intention with this book, and despite that it's still got some fun fight scenes and it was created solely for the purpose of bringing new readers into the modern era of Iron Man. Another one that I want to recommend is the run that was done by Mike Grell. You might know the name from the legendary run that was done on Green Arrow, but this followed on as part of the series that was started by Busiek, and ran for about 20 issues in the early 2000s. It's great because this often gets forgotten about, so it's somewhat of a hidden gem. The art for the suits is blocky and angular, and it almost looks like it's part of a Zack Snyder movie, and it connects both his modern continuity with his origins. There's also a fun, wacky crossover with Thor, and it came out in a time when Tony Stark had been established, and the groundwork 
artwork had already been laid out. It balances out a lot of different tones as well. There's some goofy time travel stuff, some kind of international espionage plot, and it's just good Iron Man storytelling. The complete collection disappeared from print, but if you can hunt this down, maybe you can find it on Marvel Unlimited, I reckon that you'll have a good time. Next up, I'm going with Iron Man Extremis. And yeah, if you've seen Iron Man 3, this storyline will be a bit familiar, but Warren Ellis crafted a six issue story that pretty much works like a spy espionage thriller. It's more about Tony Stark and where he feels within the evolution of technology and the dangers that are presented with that, and if he's able to keep up with the times. The art by Ardy Granov is this more watercolour, realistic look that's quite muted but really works for the tone that this book's going for. And yeah, it does take a few issues for the action to kick in, it does feel like it's got the same pacing as a Hollywood movie, but if you were a fan of Jack Bauer in 24 when that was coming out, then this is a must read Iron Man story for you. It's tense, it's atmospheric, and you can comfortably read this in one sitting, and I'm saying that as a slow reader because I did that a few weeks ago. So if you want to see a full review of this book, let me know in the comment section below. And you just get a great understanding of who Tony Stark is within the Marvel Universe, it doesn't have a lot of the pressures of what was going on outside of it at the time, so you don't need to know too much before jumping into this, which would make it perfect for a new reader. Another one I want to suggest is Iron Man Enter the Mandarin. This was a six issue series that was written by the criminally underrated Joe Casey, who deserves a lot more love for all the great stories that he's put out over the years. And it was released to coincide with the first movie, even though the Mandarin wasn't the villain of that one. But it's still a perfect jumping on point if you haven't got time for one of these longer runs. Yeah, it's partially told through flashback, so Stark already does have his signature armour when it begins, and he has been in the role for a few years, but it's him reflecting on the first time he crossed paths with the Mandarin. So if you wanted a story where he goes against his arch enemy, but not have to worry about the burden of their history, then this would be perfect for you, and it has a very dreamlike art style that you don't see in a lot of Iron Man comics. I won't lie, it's not going to change your life, but it is a fun introduction that you can read comfortably in one setting. That was released just before they started changing comic Iron Man into Robert Downey Jr. Okay, next one's going to be one of the controversial picks, and I'm not going to spend too long on it, purely because I haven't read this since it came out over 10 years ago, which is the Kieran Gillen run. And I want to take this moment to remind you that Where to Start is just about fun jumping on points, and not the greatest ever runs for the character. And what I think this does right, and why it might be a good jumping on point for new readers, is bring a very accessible version of Tony to the page. Mostly because it kind of ignored what had taken place during Fraction's run. I do have to throw out a disclaimer, there is Greg Landar, but he isn't on the book for long, and it doesn't look like he photo traces too many adult movies this time. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, then make sure you check out my Marvel Iceberg video. So yeah, even though it does take more than a few liberties with the character, and I can't see it being for everyone, if you did want a title from the 2010s after the movies had already been well established, then this might be the one for you. And if I could give a suggestion, maybe just skip to the Rings of the Mandarin arc at the end, because I remember this ending a lot stronger than it started. One that I've definitely got to recommend for this video is Avengers books. Iron Man is the last of the four main Avengers that I've got to do a where to start on, and for the other three, I mentioned Avengers books, so this should come as no surprise. Because they're a huge part of Iron Man's history, and there are also plenty of stories from all the eras that could scratch that itch and also introduce you into the comic world of Iron Man. There's nearly a decade of accessible material from Bendis, you've got the Mighty Avengers, Avengers by Hickman, especially when you get into his new Avengers stuff in the Illuminati, which was a clear highlight of that run. The decade before, you've got great work from Kurt Busiek and George Perez, and even further back, if you like that era, there's a Kree Scroll War and Secret Wars. In the vast majority of the big company-wide events have Iron Man there, if not putting him front and centre, although some of these can definitely vary in the characterisation of Tony Stark. But those are just a few options, and if you wanted more Avengers suggestions, I've already done a where to start on them. Just a few honourable mentions before I wrap this video up, and I'm going to go with anything that I haven't mentioned but would get you into Iron Man comics. So you really might resonate with the Jim Lee run, or the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. run, or there might be a run that's going on at the moment that would be perfect for you. These are just a few starting points that I can personally recommend, and hopefully one of them does work for you, but there might also be something else. There is also the Ultimate Iron Man series that came out in the 2000s, and weirdly, considering I'm a massive Ultimate Marvel apologist, I'm not a massive fan of this. But you might be, and you shouldn't let that stop you from trying it. And my last honourable mention, which for some reason I always need to say explicitly, or people get really annoyed, but the very first appearance of the character. Yep, if you want to go back all the way to Tales of Suspense 39, or read the very first ongoing series that he had, that is definitely an option. But personally, I do feel it's a bit outdated, and the character's evolved so much since then, that it's not always the most representative way to approach it. But yeah, the very first time this character ever appeared, is a good place to start. But that's the video, hopefully you enjoyed it, and until next time, just make sure that you stay safe. And stay mad all you dogs. We're both. See you at the next video.